Rabbi Yosef Karo in the Shulchan Aruch begins Hilchas Purim with the statement Misha Nichna Sadar Marbin Besimcha. When the month of Adar begins, as it does tonight, so then Marbin Besimcha. We uh, express our joy. Uh, in a public fashion. Now, uh, this year well, we had two Adars because it was a leap year. So uh, almost all of the post say that uh, it's Adar Hashaini starting tonight that is the Adar. But there's a question in the Gemara, it's not that clear. Uh, which is the month that they added? They added uh, 30 days. Which is the month they added? They added at the Madar that's closest to Shvat or the Adar that's closest to Nisan? And because of that, there are great differences in halacha. For instance, uh, uh, a boy has to become Bar Mitzvah and Adar. Is he bar mitzvah in Adar Rishon or Adar Sheni? So if he was born in a leap year, so then it's simple. The month that he was born in, that's when he becomes bar mitzvah. But if he was born in a year where there is only one Adar, so when is he considered a gadol? When is he considered for an aliyah to the Torah? When is he considered that you can count him for a minion? All of those uh, differences depend on which Adar we're going to count. And uh, in later times, the Shach uh, discusses uh, regarding uh, your sight, which becomes even more tricky because people uh, are very sensitive about the dates of your sight. And uh, so then, uh, who gets the aliyah? When does the aliyah happen? Uh, when is the uh, day of the yard site to be commemorated? Or when uh, it, it's just another month? And uh, it also uh, is uh, a... Uh, <clears throat> a matter of uh, shtarot, of notes. What if they did not specify? The man said, the, the Gemara brings the famous case that the man specifies, he signs a lease. And he says, uh, I pay you, uh, let's say, 10,000 shekel a year. When is the year up? Is it 12 months? Or is it when the year is up and in a leap year it'll be 13 months? And the difference uh, can be uh, uh, sums of money. And all of this is discussed uh, uh, in order to, uh, and, and again, uh, there really is no clarity in the Indian because there are different opinions. So there are opinions that uh, both Adars are of equal weight. Therefore, the person has two yard sites, and you got to give them after both times. Or uh, there are those that say only the second Adar, the first Adar doesn't count at all. And there are those that say that's the first Adar. Uh, so uh, there is... Uh, this uh, question, but the main question here is, what does that mean, Marbin Besimcha? What do we do? Uh, we say Tachnun the whole month except for Purim. Uh, nothing changes. Uh, we don't have any special. Uh, Except for Purim, again, the mitzvah of Purim, but we don't have special sudot, we don't have anything. So uh, what does it mean, Marvin Besimcha? And on that also, there were different opinions. 
One opinion is that it puts us in a marbin besimcha is a mood. How do I feel this month? So there are months that I feel good. And there are months that I feel better because of my emotional state. So like for instance, so we all know that we feel differently in the months of Elul and Tishrei than we do in uh, Shvat, uh, you know, Tevis and Shvat. Because the emotion is there. And that is what is meant by Marbin Besimcha. So there is no uh, particular observance in the month that makes it Marbin Besimcha over any other month. That's pretty bland. So in Shulchan Aruch they add something based again on the Gemara that uh, in this month if a person has uh, disputes with non-Jews so this is a good month to, uh, to go to court so to speak because uh, this month was uh, mazel dik for the Jews whereas in the month of Menachem Ov, which is uh, the month of mourning for the Jewish people one should uh, attempt to avoid any confrontations whatsoever, especially with non-Jews, during that month. This is quoted from the Gemara, and it's quoted in Shulchan Aruch. But there are many Meforshim, later Rishonim, that dissented from this. Because this opens up the whole question, are there lucky days or not lucky days? Is there a better time, a worse time? Should you invest in the market this month? Not me. <laughs> but that's, there are people that, uh, you know, they call it today biofeedback, right? So, like, people, uh, you want, if you want to move, uh, don't, you have to move on a Tuesday. Because that's Yom Shuch Val Tov. So first of all, Yom Shuch Babel Kitov is also Friday. And Friday is not a good day to move because it's right up to go to Shabbos. And uh, secondly, uh, people used to ask me, you know, so I'm, uh, I'm from the other side on all of these questions. I used to say you move when the movers can move you. That's the good day when they show up because there are times when they don't show up so is there such a thing as a lucky day a good thing now in the time of uh, the Gemara and in later times in the Middle Ages it was established everybody felt even those that were uh, so to speak scientific that the stars influence uh, what happens to people and what happens on Earth. And therefore, the signs of the stars, the mazolos, uh, they were important. The mazolos are the signs of the zodiac, which are not Jewish in their origin. They're completely pagan. Nevertheless, the Jewish people adopted them so that every month has a mazel. Now the Gemara says, ain mazel the Yisrael. The simple explanation without uh, any embellishment is that we're not affected by the stars, we're not affected by the signs of the zodiac, we're not affected by any of that. So there's a difference of opinion. Rashi seems to hold that there is something to Mazolos, but that the Jewish people are protected from that thing that does exist. And the Rambam and the Miri and other Rishonim hold that the whole thing is nonsense. That there is no no power whatsoever, and that uh, 
The Rambam, in fact, uh, lists it as one of the types of the dark Eoemori, the ways of the pagans. The pagans are the ones that believe in all of this. The Rabban Hashem didn't give you this. He didn't make you a superstitious people. He didn't make it that somehow you should feel uh, that, uh, that there are all of these things that influence us, etc. You know, so this was a basic difference, uh, two streams, so to speak, in, uh, in how we view... Uh, and how we view all of these things. So, for instance, the Rambam doesn't bring Mishanich uh, Nasad or Marbin Besimcha, because Adar is the same as any other month. And he doesn't bring uh, uh, the, 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 the thing regarding Menachem Rav either, because what's the difference uh, over Tammuz or uh, Eor? They're all the same. They don't really. Uh, influence us in any way. However, you know, uh, since it was so uh, well accepted in the world, in the non-Jewish world, that these things exist and that there is influence. So there were astrologers, there was a profession. You went to people and they told you what star you were born under and what this and this and this and so they could tell you your future, what you should do, right? What you should invest in the market. Mm-hmm. And today's astrologers are called financial advisors. <laughs> you also have no clue, right? But the people go. Because we like that. You know? We like to have the surety that someone can tell us what's going to be. And so therefore that applies here too. So the, uh, in Eastern Europe and amongst the Edes uh, Mizrach, almost universally within the Jewish people, uh, there was a belief in these things. Uh, it became almost a custom. And we all know that customs have a great power Sometimes they have a greater power uh, than the uh, mitzvahs themselves. I uh, always uh, quote to you Rabbi Yaakov Emden's famous quip. They said, it's too bad that Lotignov is not a minog. Because <laughs> if it would be a minog, he said, then people would observe it. But like this, it's as hard as Sarah Sadibri, but you know, it's got nothing to do with me. But that's the nature of society and the nature of people. And especially when uh, Kabbalah became uh, widespread in the Jewish world, and Kabbalah is based on the fact that it sees a different world than the world that we see alone. So therefore, all of these things took hold. And... uh, I would say today, uh, the vast majority of the Jewish people. So it's interesting, even people that are uh, not observant. Uh, but they hold from these things, which are basically superstitions. But because life is so strange, and events that happen are so inexplicable that we cannot rationalize them, so this gives us a comfort level. And we say, you know, so that we say that, therefore, at every simcha, we say mazel tov. So mazel tov means that it should be under a good sign of the zodiac. We use it to say congratulations, that's what mazel tov means. But basically, that's what it means. So all of this uh, impinges upon us. It, uh, it, uh, it, it, it affects us. It affects how we look at life, how we do things. And you don't live 2,000 years uh, in the exile without picking up a lot of baggage. 
And you don't live uh, 800 years in Poland without having a lot of Polish uh, peasant uh, customs. I know the, I know my mother, blessed memory, was a very rational woman. But she would not sew a button if I was wearing the shirt unless she gave me something to eat at the same time. I remember I was six, seven years old. I said, Ma, what's this? And she said, oh, that's our custom. But that's a pagan custom. It's from the dark of your memory. Yeah, yeah, all of these things are. But when they become ingrained within the society, so then they become part of us. So therefore, my friends, when you move, move on a Tuesday. <laughs>